And welcome back to Sports on Tap. We're live from Seas Cream and Bean in Hinkley, Ohio. It's Sports on Tap's Ohio High School football preview show live from Z's, 2706 Boston Road in Hinkley, Ohio. In a nice crowd. It's beautiful outside. And a great night for ice cream, milkshakes, and anything uh, that they make here. Hey, a quick public service announcement. Uh, I've been uh, talking to the back channels on Facebook about uh, Z's Cream and Bean. They uh-huh. introduced a new ice cream uh, or an ice cream they haven't had in a long time tonight. They have uh, peach ice cream. Uh, Which is been, very good, by the way. It's been brought back, but um, I asked, inquired about the best ice cream I probably ever had. It's peanut butter pie. Um, I had that. Uh, so what does that consist of? Is uh, that just well, I'm hoping it, peanut butter. It, I know, but it, is it vanilla ice cream? It cons- or? Yeah, it's like it's like their hard ice cream there. Okay. It's a flavor of ice cream. Uh, it's pretty much heaven in a bowl. Uh, <laughs> that's what it consists of, angels and, and harps and all, all that good stuff. But, no, it's really good, and uh, they just said uh, – that it could be coming back next week, so. So does that is, is it just here on uh, in the fall and then it no, goes I don't away know. for it's, a little it's while? It's kind or? of a sporadic limited edition. Okay. So limited edition peanut butter pie ice cream. All right. Speaking of maybe they uh, should name it the Jeffy. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> All right, back to high school football. High Enough school football. We here. previewed uh, the Greater Cleveland Conference. We previewed the Southwestern Conference. Now it's time to preview the Suburban League National Division. Ed Dick will uh, cover that division. And, Ed, what do you have for us this year? Well, uh, the Suburban League's uh, National Division had not one but two champions as the title was split between uh, the Stowe Monroe Falls Bulldogs and the Hudson Explorers. Both teams went 6-1 in National Division play, and they both advanced in their respective state playoffs. Hudson won Division II Region 5 and advanced to the Division II state semifinals for the second consecutive year. And it's actually the third straight year that they've made it to the state semifinals in any division. Uh, Stowe advanced to the second round of the Division I Region 1 playoffs. And we also had a third playoff team, Brooksville Broadview Heights. They qualified for the Division II Region 5 playoffs. We're going to start with Hudson. Uh, Jeff Goff is into his second season as Hudson's head coach. And he returns a team eager to bust through to the state finals after going 11-3 and last year in 2016. Quarterback Colt Play returns to run the offense alongside running backs Dawson Worthy and Kevin Callahan. Two-way players Andrew Studer, Dean Palumbo, and Colin Paltani, and also offensive lineman Jack Nord. Defensive, uh, defensively, defensive lineman Matt Rudy, linebacker Angelo Donatelli, and defensive lineman Brady Ludwig will lead the traditionally stout Explorer defense looking to replace, you know, it's, it's tough to replace the guys they had last year. You know, Jackson Parker and uh, Matt Restifo uh, were, were big parts of that offense last in defense last year. Um, last and certainly not least, this guy has been around forever. Um, and now that we don't play him every year, he's probably one of my favorite kickers I've ever seen. Uh, senior kicker Grant Gagne returns for his fourth season wow. as the Hudson Explorer starting kicker. Um, I'll tell you what, they've been, audit- they, they've been pretty much guaranteed three points is, is in the red zone for the last three years. Um, he is such a weapon for that team, and uh, I'm looking for big things out of him this year again. Uh, Hudson, they're going to travel to Austin Town Fitch uh, to kick off their 2017 season. We move to Stowe, Stowe Monroe Falls. The Bulldogs, they were 10-2 and last year. They reside in Division I, Region I. They'll be breaking in a host of new starters after the last two seasons. Um, you know, behind the Gobble Brothers at running back, Joe Andresi as receiver and uh, quarterback Kyle Van Trees. You know, they've they've taken this program to newer uh, to heights they've never seen. You know, Coach Mark Nori, who's now in his eighth season, he lost 19 seniors from last season's championship team. Wow. Uh, they do return running back Terry and Ray. He's going to look to continue the streak of that excellent tailback play along with two-way lineman Richie Morocco, uh, two, tailback linebacker Brian Davides. Uh, Sean, uh, safety wide receiver Tyler Shaver will lead the defensive backfield. And the Bulldogs, they're going to look to return to the playoffs for the third consecutive season. The Bulldogs will start their season hosting the Lake Catholic Cougars uh, in week one. Great game there. Brexville Broadview Heights, they were 8-3 and three in total last year. They were 5-2 and two in the conference. Their only two losses were to Hudson and Stowe in conference play. They qualified for the playoffs as the sixth seed in Division II Region 5. First-year head coach Jason Simonetti, 
He no longer has all-world quarterback Luke Sternad, uh, but he does return running back Alec Buckley, receiver with Sam Wigloos, and guard Cole Costanzo to help anchor that offense. A very prolific offense at that. Uh, you know, with Luke Sternad, you pretty much had another coach on the field. Yeah. I, I saw him per- up close and personal against Brunswick, and that dude is, he was a machine, and he really made that team go. So it's going to, replacing his quarterback play is going to be a big question mark for Brexford Broadview Heights. Uh, linebacker Michael Rose will anchor the Bees defense, along with Jack O'Donnell and Michael Graham. Uh, the Bees are going to host the uh, an old Southwestern Conference rival, Olmsted Falls, in week one. Moving on to Wadsworth, going down to Medina County. The Grizzlies just missed qualifying for the Division II Region Six playoffs. They went 5-5 five and five in, oh, overall. They were 4-3 and three in conference play, having... You know, they started out a little slow. Uh, they really picked up some steam at the end there uh, behind quarterback, uh, first-team all-district quarterback Joey Bachman. He's going to come back for his senior year. He's going to be protected by off- offensive linemen Clay McComas and Matt Gable. Uh, Joe, Fahrenholt, Joe Fahrenholtz and Dylan Miller is going to anchor the defensive line for the Grizzlies. Uh, Wadsworth is going to begin their 2017 campaign under coach Justin Todd against uh, Akron Firestone. They're going to be coming to Wadsworth for that game. Macedonia Nordonia, we were looking for big things out of them last year. They were returning a lot of a lot of key players. Uh, Anthony Perrine is a it was a was a big one. Uh, you know he he now graduates, uh, but that's going to open the door now for Ty Evans to take over uh, as as the main tailback for his senior year. Ty Evans has been a great receiver out of the backfield and almost like a great one-two punch with Anthony Perrine uh, in that Nordonia Knight backfield for the last couple of years. Uh, quarterback Robbie Levick and wide receiver Donnie Wisniak will also return back for their uh, you know, for the offensive side. Sam Hopes and Niles Beverly are going to help out on the defensive end uh, for the Nordonia. They are going to open up the season against the Bedford Bearcats. That'll be a tough uh, in one in week one. Yeah, absolutely. Bedford was a playoff team last year, yeah. and uh, you know they they can put some points up. So this will be a, a very very good test for Nordonia. I was, you know, like I said, I thought they were. I don't want to call it. I don't want to be negative and call it a disappointment. I was just surprised uh, at, at where they ended up in the conference. They were one and six in the in conference play after wow. starting the non-conference season two and one. Um, you know, but I have no doubt that Nordonia. They're traditionally a pretty strong squad, and I'm looking, I'm looking for them to bounce back a little bit this year and get back to where they're used to being. We're going to move over to Twinsburg, the Twinsburg Tigers. They improved to four and six last year uh, overall. And they've also finished four and three in the conference. They had a very tough non-conference slate, uh, taking on Aurora and I believe Solon. You know, those are two really, really tough teams that you don't really want to have to deal with. But they're 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 neighbors. They're all close to each other. It just makes sense for them to play yeah, one they, another. Uh, they also play them week two and week three this year. Yes, uh, respect. And then they open the season against Copley. So that's a really tough non-conference wow. schedule. Yeah, you're not kidding there. Um, you know, so I mean, you, you look at their. So they started out 0 3 last year, and they they ended up over 500 in conference play. They have a very dynamic offense. Uh, next, next, they're gonna they're gonna have quarterback Adam Van Demotter starting as a junior, and they're bringing back wide receiver Christian uh, Christian Robertson, Trey Radford, and then running back Cameron McLean. Uh, you know, when I was looking at their, these guys' stats last year. All I saw was uh, Robertson and uh, and Radford all over the place on the stat sheets. These are guys that are very quick, uh, and they're impact players. And with and- with Van de Motter being the unquestioned starter, he's already been in the system for a year. You know, Twinsburg couldn't make a big jump. Uh, and now their conference schedule, their non-conference schedule, definitely not going to help them out. And you know, if you, if you look at who they lost to last year, they lost to teams that they probably, for all intents and purposes, should have lost to. But the games that they should have won, they won. And now it's up to them to be able to see if they can make that next step. Beat a team like Copley. Beat a team like Aurora. You know, these traditional playoff teams. Yeah, they're there every year. E- exactly. I mean, they had a really good run back in the late 2000s with uh, Coach Mark Solis when they were still part of the uh, the North the Northeast Ohio Conference. Brunswick, you know, we used to play them a lot. And, uh, you know, they, they had some very, very uh, good players back then. And, we're, and it, we'll see if they can harness that and get that going for 2017 
We're going to move back over to Cuyahoga County, go to North Royalton, the Bears. They're going to return quarter, sophomore quarterback Joe Marusek and senior running back Zach Antonio to run the Bears offense for head coach Nick Siuli. Uh North Royalton, as part of the competitive balance, they do move down to Division II, Region 6. Uh, they were in Division I, Region 2 last year, along with Brunswick and Strongsville. Uh, the Bears are looking to build upon their 3-7 and seven season. They are going to travel to North Ridgeville for week one in an old school pioneer conference contest there (laughs) last and certainly not least the Cuyahoga Falls Black Tigers last year they won their first game of the 2016 campaign uh, but unfortunately they cannot get on the left side of the ledger for the remainder of the season Uh, quarterback Nate Vassilotti moves on but he will be followed by his brother Ty Vassilotti to run the Tigers offense the Black Tigers also move uh, down to Division 2 they're going to be in Division 2 Region 5 uh, as opposed to Division One, Region One, uh, Region Two, they're going to look for their second win to start the season in a row. Uh, they're going to travel to Kent Roosevelt uh, to kick their season off and see if they can continue that streak against Kent Roosevelt. And you know, we'll see if they can if they can be a little more competitive and get and, and pick up a win in conference play. You know, it's, it's in the Calgary Falls. They had their heyday back in the early 2000s. Um, you know, they had some really good athletes coming out of that school, and you know, they're just falling. They're just in a tough conference right now. Yeah. Um, you know, and that doesn't help them out. So, you know, they need to cultivate a nice culture there and, 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 and stick together, and hopefully they can surprise it's, you know surprise some teams in the 2017 well, season. Well, just like with North Royalton, this competitive balance of the new play, in the, for the new playoffs with the um, um, the state is doing it could benefit a team like Cuyahoga Falls and even North Royalton. Uh, if they do have a season where they get into the playoffs – they don't have to go up against that, you know, Division One, that D one. Although Division Two, you know, Region Five and Six are just, you know, they're as difficult as well. Absolutely. There's some tough teams in there, but uh, just that stigma of it being D one, uh, you know, not being in D one, that'll be helpful. Yeah, I mean, and plus, I mean, when you're looking at them too, just from a, in a vacuum, I mean, you beat them, you lose, a, you lose half a point on your level one points. Yep. Um, you know, so if you got them on your schedule and you're, you're, it's a traditionally a six-point win, it now becomes a 5.5 win. Um, yeah. You know, and that uh, weird things have happened where that makes a major, major difference. For sure. Uh, when, Absolutely. You're looking at, when you're looking at playoff standing. So um, looking for an, another great year out of Suburban League National League ball. Um, you know, the last two you know, since uh, this is our third year, I think, for the Suburban yep. League, both American and National Division. And, uh, you know, both – the top heavy teams have made impact in the playoffs. So, yep. they're lo- looking for big things in the national division. I want to throw it over uh, to my colleague, uh, my coworker, my compadre, Sean Duffy is going to talk about the Suburban League American Division. Abs- American, absolutely. Thank you, Ed. And to go off of your point, that's the theme I've selected this year, as, as I did last Wait, year. You have a theme? I do. Wow. Um, the Suburban League American Division is top heavy. In, in a couple of ways. Starting off with Aurora, I mean, Aurora, one of the big things is we just touched on it. They are starting this year. They are now in Division Three, Region 9, which last year they were the number one seed in Division Two, Region 6, I believe. Five, five, I'm sorry, five. Um, so that's a big change for them. Uh, but again, you look at their team, they're returning 12 of their 22 starters, but the one position that I'm a little concerned about with Aurora is they don't have a returning quarterback. Whoever their quarterback is is going to be new, not maybe not necessarily new to the system, but new to being a starter. You still have great weapons like a Gavin Blunt, wide receiver slash out offensive linebacker, uh, who is committed to Akron. Uh, you know, you still have a pretty good offensive. You have a really good offensive line. In fact, you have two. I'm, I'm counting two or three starters, and Mason Copley, who has a slew of offers, not only from the Max schools, Division One Max schools, but Ivy League and military academies. Wow. Uh, you have, you know, Sonny Quarantero. I, if I butcher your name, I'm so sorry. That's what you're uh, good at, Sean. Yeah, Keep yeah, it up. Okay. That's but what, that's but what you could email us at sportsontappodcast at gmail.com with and, the correct pronunciation. And on the flip side of with Aurora, uh, you know, they have a really good defense. I mean, a lot of their returners are coming back on defense. They had a really good defense last year. You know, I look for them to be – you know, at the top of the division as they've been the last two or three years. Um, Going to be a little bit different now they're playing in Division Three. I wonder, I know they say they say competitive balance, but when you move the number one seed in a Division Two team down to Division Three, 
how, my, I'm going to question how much competitive balance is it really. I mean, yeah, they're joining teams like Chardon. Yeah, they're going to be in the same division as in-conference rival Talmadge. But there's going to be some things in there that where, again, it's going to be create a top-heavy uh, situation. The next team I would touch on is, when I when I talk about the top-heavy is Barberton. I look for Barberton to be the really the – them and maybe Copley to be the ones that are really going to challenge – Aurora for that division for that division crown this year. They have quarterback Zane Reese. They have wide receiver Key Thompson who committed to Ohio University. You know the, they have the offensive firepower. And last year they came right down to the end with with Aurora. They snuck into the playoffs. I don't think that's going to be an issue this year because now with a, with Aurora vacating that division, I think Barberton rises to the top of of that particular division to Region 5 area or or in the top four, in the top four where they're hosting a playoff game. I look for them to take a big step forward playoff-wise. Now, in the division, I think it's going to be those two teams kind of battling it out. Now, again, I have some questions with teams like Copley and Highland where they're kind of that mid-tier. I think when you look at Copley and, Ho- and Highland, Highland was bitten, was bitten was did not play very consistently last year. They lost an opening game. They played very well, but when they reached teams like the Auroras, when they te- reached teams like Copley, they, they got the hamstrung, um, and, they fail- and they failed to make the playoffs in their division. Same thing, I think, with Copley. They have to replace a very, very potent weapon in Weston Bridges this year. He was the man for their offense yeah, last year, and I don't know if they necessarily have that – reload mentality it may be a little bit of a rebuild on the off on the offensive side in copley i don't question their defense i don't question their their coaching staff there i just think weston bridges production level was off the charts last year and that now that he's gone to michigan state do you, do they fall off a little bit my next tier there is your kent roosevelt your revere and your talmage these squads i think are going to be better they may be more competitive against teams like aurora uh and, and maybe Barberton, but again, I think, you know, my only real kind of dark horse there would be Revere. I think Revere may be stepping up a little bit in talent-wise this year. I think they found something in their running game last year. I think they can build on that, um, and I also think they can do a very good job, you know, of, of playing with teams like your Highlands and your Auroras, but again, I, those are my three teams. You want to see Kent Roosevelt and Talmadge improve. They, they were consistently at the bottom of the division last year. Not really a factor in the playoffs halfway through the season. You don't want that to happen. So I, I, I'm as much as I see the parity in the GCC and the in the Southwestern Conference and even in the Amer- in the national division. I think the American division is really Aurora, Barberton, maybe Copley, um, but then then your then your Highlands and your Reveres are kind of on the edge teams. Um, and, and again, Copley's a big question mark because you don't know if they can replace Weston Bridges, who was, by all accounts, when we saw yeah, him play, that kid was ready Michigan, to play. Going yeah, to Michigan, Michigan State, State. Yeah. big timer. You get him in the college weight room for one year, and he's going to be making a lot of noise in the Big Ten. But again, you saw how how much. I mean, not so much he's just relied a strong on, but it was he. They controlled that game, and when that's gone, now you're going to something that you may not have a lot of confidence in. It's so, just a strong running back. It's it's definitely going to be interesting in the American in the American division. And I'm hoping for some really good games. I just look at my, that particular division and make it a little bit top heavy, um, which creates a situation where you're looking at maybe Aurora and Barberton kind of fighting it out, and they actually meet on, and that's going to be the big game, I believe, for that division. They meet in we on the September 29th in week six, I think it is. Yes, you are in correct. In week six, so that I mean that could conceivably. I mean, with Highland behind it, maybe if Highland that's has that's a big, big right, game that's going to be a big season. game. Yeah, it's a big game. For now sure. again, you have your bar. They, I mean, they kind of get a break. They start out. I mean, Aurora starts out with Solon, then they play Euclid, and then Twinsburg, which is a pretty tough games. But then they get into Talmadge and Kent Roosevelt, where again maybe the bottom half of that of the division a little bit. Uh, but then you have Barberton, Highland, Revere, who could, who's kind of a question mark, and then you could run into Copley right before you play your last non-conference game at the end of the year. So they could have this wrapped up by week nine. Yeah, and you, you mentioned Revere. I mean, they 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 start out very hot, you know, uh, with, with Peyton Langdon as their as their running back, and he, you know, from what I understand, he's I believe he, he believe he graduated last year. So I mean, you yeah. lose that you lose that big weapon from from the Revere side. And you wonder if they're going to be able to replace him to yeah. be able to, to make those big runs. Yeah, um, you know, I, I think he, he kind of suffered from the same fate that you know maybe Highland did last year, where you know against some of the lesser teams he was able to run rush right. out all over him. Right. Uh, but when he got to some 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 contenders, they were able to bottle him up a little bit. 
and uh, they made things a little bit tougher on them. So, you know, we'll see if, if Revere can maintain, you know, can get a running back that can carry that momentum yep. that they were able to gain last year. And, again, you, you see teams, and, again, it's just kind of looking at I, when, what I do is I look at overall performance over the last couple of years and the way they trend, and it just seems like Aurora's been at the top and they haven't moved. The needle's been pretty even with them. They're just consistently good. Barberton, kind of the same thing. Copley, a little bit up and down first couple of years, and then last year, obviously a great year. And then you have your Reveres and your, and, and your Highlands, where, again, Highlands a very talented team, and they have a very good coach, but you just wonder, like I said, is it a situation And they make where, the leap. Yeah, and and they compete with the can, big boys. Can they can can they go to can they go into Aurora and win? Can they beat a team like Barberton? Can they beat Copley? Because in order for them to make the playoffs, they're going to have to beat those teams, yeah. unfortunately. And what also I now that Aurora is a Division three school, does beating does losing to them hurt them more? You see what I'm saying? Like in a division, no, it doesn't. In a division, losing two? does losing never hurts you. It losing does, to a division losing, three? No, uh, losing to losing as far as points are concerned, it hurts you whether you lose to division one, division two, division three. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Losing is zero points no matter who you play. Right. Yeah. You, get, you right. get you gain from wins. Right. So I mean, beating Aurora, who is now a division three school, they're going to win probably nine or ten games, right. but you're not going to get as many. You're not going to get as many first level points from them anymore because yeah. they just went down a level. Yeah. That's it. And that's. I mean, that's. I don't think that takes away from, and again, I, that goes back to my question about competitive balance. I think Aurora, I, I don't know if that was more of a regional decision that was made, but, you know, when you're the number one seed two years in a row in the Division Two, why move down? And maybe it could be a, a situation of enrollment. I don't know. <laughs> but it just, I mean, when you're looking at a team that dominated the American Division two years, at least two years in a row that I've, that it's been around, and been, you know, in the top, I mean, the top two or three of the division playoffs regions. I mean, it's, it, I, it doesn't really scream competitive balance to me. It, well, you you take a team like Aurora, who is in a, a conference with, or our division, you know, a region with Walsh Jesuit, Brexford Broadview Heights, Warren G. Harding. Yeah. You know, some studs up there. Yeah. You move them to Division Three, Region Nine, where you have a Buckeye team we're going to talk about here shortly, who is reloading this yeah. year. They're not going to lose. You know, from what I understand, they're not losing much. Yeah. Um, you, you have a. Is Chardon in that? Chardon, yes. Yeah. You have Chardon. You have St. Vincent, St. Mary in that region. You have Peninsula Woodridge, who had a very, very good season last year. Um, you know, so you, you're you're replacing. The top, maybe those top tier teams that we just talked about, you know the, you know the Walsh Jesuits, mm -hmm. the Warren G Hardings, the Brexvilles, and um, you know some of the other schools that were huge up there with just as competitive teams. Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. Yeah. Well, I mean that's pretty much all we have for the American Division. I'm interested to see how it plays out. Going to be following it uh, again, as Josh mentioned. If I screwed up your name or didn't mention enough of your guys coming back, go ahead, shoot us an email, post on our site. Yell at me via Twitter. I will take all abuse. <laughs> I do it all the time. But I want to kick it over uh, to Hoban too. Yeah, Roberto Hoban. here uh, to give us some Buckeye info. Yeah, I'll give you some Buckeye info. And uh, also want to tell everyone what's going on, especially next week with the season starting on Thursday. It'll be that following Monday. From then on out, we'll have uh, shows every Monday night at 730. And uh, we'll go over games from each of our conferences uh, from top to bottom, give you uh, some highlights from the games. Give you a, the scores, uh, play, our the player of the week for our conference. Yes, yeah, sir. Player of the week, we always do. Um, go over some uh, Buckeye Bucks uh, during the season and, you know, maybe some other teams. Uh, you know, we had some uh, coaches' interviews last year from teams outside of our conferences. Um, so it's going to be a fun year. Um, but, uh, you know, you can go to our website, sportsontappodcast.com, where we will put – um, of our game of the week, we'll have video highlights from that game. We'll also have a write-up, um, maybe some pictures, and uh, it should be most weeks. There might be a week in there that uh, Sports on Tap uh, yeah, won't be too, Yeah, unable to cover. And, and on Friday nights, make sure to follow us um, on Twitter, at SOT Podcast. We're going to be, uh, when we are at the game of the week, uh, we will be uh, tweeting all the uh, updates uh, yeah, live social and, media. Yep. and use the hashtag uh, SOTHSF. Uh, we'll be using that. Make sure you do, too. 
Yeah, and also on NEO Sports Insiders, uh, you can check out high school coverage uh, there as well. Um, but 